Hey, thanks for visiting my channel. A square pillow isn't square. This is the channel where you will learn anything and everything. Thank you. You wanted to know about home deck sewing. Um, tips, tricks, techniques, advice, tutorials, anything I can think of to put on here. Um, today we're going to finish talking about this little industrial straight stitch machine. Um, we are going to thread it learn how to thread it, and learn how to wind a bobbin. And so that's what we're going to do today. All right, just in case you don't know this trick, if all you're doing is changing the thread on your machine, you've already got it threaded and you want to change colors, the easiest thing to do is to not re-thread it at all. Um, if that's the case, all you're going to want to do, sorry, I can drop my scissors, man, is cut the thread, Take off the cone, put on your new cone, tie a knot, knot these two together. I just take them together and just make an overhand knot, tie it nice and tight. You're going to pull the thread out of your needle so the knot doesn't get caught on the needle. Um, I would lift your presser foot, I'm doing it with the knee lift. and. So that takes the tension off and just pull it on through. And now all you have to do is thread your needle and you're good to go. If, however, you've actually unthreaded your entire machine and you've got to rethread it, let's just show you real quick how to do that. Okay, so obviously the first step is to bring your thread up and through your thread stand, a little guide on your thread stand. All right, let's start at the top. We are going to first come to a bar with holes in it. Um, this one's at a 45 degree angle. Usually they're either this way, straight forward and backwards or side to side. Um, doesn't really matter, but you're always going to start in the back. So this one, this is, I'm, I'm considering the back side. And you start closest to your thread or the farthest that you are um, starting from the farthest direction away and you're going to work your way forward so we're just going to come in from the back come through the first hole go up over the bar and through the middle hole and once again over the top and through the last hole sometimes these will have just two holes and you just repeat this process a second time. This has three holes, so I did it a third time. All right. See how easily that slips through? Just make sure your thread doesn't get caught like that or caught like that. You get the idea. A nice overlap. Next up, we're going to come in through this bar. The same thing. We're coming from the top and working our way down, so we're going to come from the back of this hole on the top hole, and we're going to go through this hole and the exact same principle over the top and through the bottom hole. And that's why I keep tweezers around. All right, next up, we're going to go over the top of these tension discs and in between them see that I'm between these two discs over the top between the two discs and through the little guide hole that is going to now take it down to the next step of the machine And now you should be able to feel when you're when you pull through, you should just feel a little bit of pressure from this tension disc it went through. Next step, just come into the back of this little guide and pop it back there. And now we're going to go around these tension discs. You're going to start on the right side, in between the discs, come all the way around. There's a little um, spring here. You want to make sure you go past the spring and then back down through it. 
So our thread is now going through through this little spring here underneath this little guide here and now you can see my spring is engaging and I've got some nice even pressure on this thread at this point. Alright, I'm going to raise my needle all the way to the top and there's a, a hole right here in my needle take up lever. I don't know the official name, that's what I call it. And we're going to, excuse my head so I can see, we're going to go through the hole in the little take up lever, back, snap it into place behind that guide, down through this hole, lower this so you can see it. And there's usually a little guide hole in the clamp on this needle bar. Um, you're going to go through that, there, through that hole. Yeah. And the last thing is going through your needle. Make sure when your needle is installed in these machines, they almost always have a, a groove in the side of the needle that goes on the left side. I can run my thumbnail right up and down that groove. It's easy to feel. You want to make sure that that is perpendicular to the front of the table. Um, so the groove is on the left and the sewing machine is always threaded from the left. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Oops, got twisted up there. There we go. That's all there is to it. If anything I'm doing here is unclear, seems confusing, or if you have any questions at all, please just ask me in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer them for you. And if you like this video or the other videos on my channel, please hit that subscribe button. The bobbin case is going to be underneath the table. Um, you can get to it underneath the table or through the top here. And just like bobbins in most machines, it has a little lever you hold on to to pull it in and out. You're going to see the an angled line there. You just want to always make sure that your bobbin thread is unwinding in the opposite direction. So this would be the same direction and this is the opposite direction. So we want to put it in the opposite direction through that slot and behind this little pressure spring here then you simply hold the lever like that make sure the thread is up out of the way and when you go up underneath I can feel exactly where it goes I just snap it in There we go. Ready to sew. Alright, let's wind a bobbin on this thing. This is actually really, really easy to do. As you know, there's two, usually two cone stands on these machines. One is for your thread and one is for winding bobbins so you don't have to cut your, uh, cut your needle thread every time you need to wind a bobbin. Um, let me switch this out to a color that's easier to see. We're going to just bring it through our thread guide at the top. I don't think you can see that on camera, but um, I'm just putting it through my thread stand guide. Bring your thread down and through this first big hole. And bring your thread over the top of these tension discs in between them and through the tension discs. Make sure you, you can feel some pressure on it. You don't want it real loose, you don't want it real tight, just some, some light pressure on it. And the trick really is with these bobbins. Um, you can see one side of the bobbin 
doesn't have little holes in it and one does. The way that I wind these bobbins is I simply stick my thread through any one of these holes put it on my winder so that the little holes are on the outside and you can see here's my tail then you press this down and as you can see what that does is it engages this little spring this is just sort of a little pressure spring that tells the machine when your bobbin is full and it will pop back up and stop winding it also engages the bobbin winder to start working so you have to push that down I'm going to kick this on it, now you can on these machines you can wind a bobbin while you're sewing once you get it started um, you just can sew and it will wind itself but since I'm not sewing anything right now what I like to do is pull the if my machine is threaded, pull the thread out of my needle so that I'm not um, sewing nothing. <laughs> Take the needle thread out. And a lot of times, too, I'll lift my presser foot up. Either I'll hold it with my knee or I'll lift it up with the hand, the hand lever. And I do that so that, it, like I said, if I'm not already sewing, this way the foot isn't just making a lot of noise, sewing nothing against the feet, dogs, and so forth. It just takes the pressure off of the, of the presser foot and keeps the needle thread from getting tangled up. So I've got my presser foot up, I've got my little tail here, and press my foot pedal, and there it goes. And it just broke my thread off, as you can see, just from twisting it, it just popped it right off. You're just going to thread that bobbin. Uh, wind the bobbin. I'm not going to wind the whole thing, but when it's done, if this is adjusted correctly, this will pop up, cut off your thread, and you've got yourself a nice wound bobbin. Super easy.